running coach, cooking instructor, and author of Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, a game plan for the budget-conscious cook, which proved to be sufficiently popular that it quickly went to a second printing. Ellen is a resident of Holmes Beach, Florida, known as the Veg Coach, and her book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, would certainly appear to counter the contention that it's expensive to eat vegan. And I just kind of like the idea of discussing vegan cooking and eating on a day before Thanksgiving. I'm a maverick that way, I guess. Anyways, with a reminder that we invite you to join the conversation by calling 813-239-9663 or emailing dj at wmnf.org. Let's welcome Ellen Jaffe Jones to Talking Animals. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning, Declan. So happy to have you in studio. We rarely, rarely get to guests in studio, so it's a real pleasure to be able to sit right across from our guest and have eye contact and all the normal conversational things. So Great. thank you for doing it. So uh, to provide a, a sort of a backdrop, backdrop for much of the rest of our conversation, let's start with the uh, sort of thing you must have counted dozens if not hundreds of times by now, with the changes you made 30 years ago and why. The initial change came the year I was 28. I almost died of a colon blockage. I was working as a television investigative reporter in St. Louis, my hometown. Did that for 18 years. And uh, we had a snowstorm, and the station was catering food, if you can call it that. Uh, highly processed, very salty meats, and I collapsed in the newsroom. They rushed me to the emergency room, and uh, the doctors said they'd never seen a colon blockage that large in somebody my age, and I would need to be on medication the rest of my life. It was the same year my sister got breast cancer for the second time. And eventually, my mom, aunt, and both sisters went on to have breast cancer. So back then, 30 years ago, people, doctors were saying, you better do something with your life differently, kid, or you're going to end up like everybody else in the family. And so that, that who connected the dots for you? Did you connect the dots? Uh, here, here's your own experience. Here's what's happening in your family. But back then, was there as much uh, clear evidence to say, hey, well, ergo, I should change my diet and change it in these ways? There was nothing. I... After that experience in the emergency room, I ran to the health food store and read all five books on fiber. That was all there was at the okay. time. And I have really been focused on this, though, since my aunt died of breast cancer in our home when I was five years old. People have asked me, how long have you been working on the book? Well, yeah, all my life. Yeah, in a sense, <laughs> right. To figure yeah. out, how do I avoid this mess? Because we would congregate in hospital rooms and joke that this was our family reunion because people would come from all over the country to be with the person who was suffering from whatever medical malady was going on. Or we would joke, what hospital wing are we paying for with this particular illness? Wow. And after a while, I didn't find it very funny. Sure. Well, with that in mind, and with all those people kind of rotating in, which, you know, sort of had a, a gallows humor, I guess, kind of a uh, comedic edge to it, who else in your family followed suit, though? When you, when you said, you know what, here's what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to change my diet. Did others follow suit in your family? You are so funny. You are a comedian, aren't you? Well, unintentionally sometimes, sadly. <laughs> you know that, that expression, a prophet is without honor in his or her own land? Well, suffice it to say, that's been my story. I mean, I've tried, as you can imagine. Uh, when my sister got breast cancer, I went to the health food store. I actually delivered groceries to her. And, you know, God love her. She said to me, look, this is my life. This is the way I want to lead it. And you don't have a right to tell me what to do. And that taught me a whole lot. As I progressed forward and started uh, teaching cooking classes for the national nonprofit, the Cancer Project, that was sort of my release, like, because those people, they were really listening. And I actually had a woman lose 120 pounds in eight months after taking the class and just never counting a calorie, never being hungry, and loving the food. And I'm sorry, but you can make tofu taste like chicken. Um, but she was also a multiple myeloma survivor, and mm. her cancer markers improved so much that they released her from Moffitt, um, said, you know, you can just get your blood work monitored on your own. And I got a, uh, a note from her on Facebook, six years out, she says, I'm still doing great, my, my cancer markers are fine, and I'm still a raving vegan. <laughs> wow, okay, well, there's a success story right there. So, so um, okay, so here we are 30 years later, and you said in a, kind of an aside there that, that really all those 30 years were sort of preparation for the book, but still, uh, I guess, it does beg the question, in a sense, like why now? Why, well, not now, but you know, when you did actually write the book, uh, probably within a year or so ago, what, when did you say, or why did you say, now I've got it, I'm going to put this down, I'm going to make a book that's going to help people in that way? I'll get to that in a second, but I do just want to say that as a television investigative reporter, I covered uh, Puppy Mills in Missouri, which is one of the worst states, still is. 
I covered the way animals were improperly disposed of in Miami, which um, those kinds of images really stuck with me. Then I interviewed doctors and regis uh, registered dietitians over the years who, you know, as I started connecting the dots, it was like, aha, there's no money in broccoli. And I started coming to this reality uh, as a woman who was faced with so much breast cancer, doctors also told me to breastfeed long and often, and I took them so seriously that I actually became a Leche League leader and trainer in Missouri. That's a breastfeeding information support group for sure. those who don't know. And as any breastfeeding mother will tell you, this is just so much common sense that we 